Hey, I'm gonna share with you seven, seven millionaire mind shifts, secrets that I use to go from zero to over $30 million before I turn 30 years old. Hey everyone, it's Shaka Rusen here, founder of Funnels.com and listen up, if you've ever wanted to make a million dollars, if you've ever wanted to become financially free, I want to share with you seven things, seven mindset shifts, almost invisible mindset shifts I had and I developed to help me go from zero to a million dollars and beyond. And I was able to go from literally broke, buried in debt, growing up in the streets of East London, dropping out of university, literally going from absolute zero, negative zero, to a cash rich millionaire in just under three years. And I was about 23 years old when I made my first million dollars profit. So I'm gonna share with you the first and biggest lesson that I've discovered. I hope these seven things can help you too. And the first one was everything is your fault. And even if it's not your fault, you must take responsibility. Okay, so every single thing that happens, good, bad, ugly, boom, you must take responsibility. What I found, because not only have I done this for myself, but I've got many students that have gone on to make, you know, a million dollars, $10 million. There's students from literally all different countries from all over the world, all different ages. I've seen them, you know, come to my live events. Some of them became really mega successful and others not so much. And so, you know, I've always been fascinated about what makes someone, you know, financially free, what makes someone get the results that they want. And then the others, why do they get stuck? And why do they not? achieve the results that they want and one of the biggest things is rich people are always in control of their actions when i was growing up i grew up in a three-bedroom council flat 13 people used to live in there we had family members from back home and everyone used to just live in this three-bedroom council flat i could have easily just say hey i grew up poor i don't have the right education i don't have the right network i don't have the right friends i don't have the right mentors but instead guess what i did i went out and i sought out the best of the best. I remember at 21 years old, I got an invitation to go to Las Vegas to attend this event in the Paris Hotel. One of the reasons why I went there was I was dead broke and someone said to me, hey, if you go to this event, you're gonna be able to, this was the sales pitch, rub shoulders with millionaires and learn about internet marketing. And at that time, you know, the only people that I knew that were millionaires were like property guys. And I was like, I wanna be young and rich, not 50 and rich, okay? No offense if you're 50 years old and I'm watching this, but it is, you know, I'd rather be young and rich, wouldn't you? Okay, and so I said to myself, hey, right now, I have an opportunity to go and learn and I'm broke, so I'm going to go and find the money. I got resourceful. I borrowed about 1500 quid, just under $2,000 from a friend of mine. And then I got on a plane and I went to Las Vegas. And when I went there, I also met all of these people. And it was like, this guy's making 50 grand a month. This guy's making 100 grand a month. I didn't even know people that were making 100 grand a year. I was like, you know, if you work 10 years and you become a doctor or something, then, then you're successful. That was the mindset that my friends, family, uh, parents taught me, you know, go to school, go to college, go to university, uh, work hard, save up your money, get a job in Canary Wharf or something, right? And so early on, I, I realized I must take responsibility for all aspects of my life. If I'm broke, it's my responsibility. If something goes wrong, hey, I take responsibility. I'm not blaming what I find. Students that are very successful of mine and students that are unsuccessful. The unsuccessful ones, will always blame their opportunity, they'll blame others, they'll blame society, they'll blame their government, whatever. But the people that create massive success, what they'll do is they'll always say stuff like, hey, this and this happened, but I, it's my responsibility. This and this happened, but I'm at fault. Hey, this and this happened, but here's what I can control. They have a higher level of self-awareness. There's no, um, excuse my language, but bitching, moaning about why it's so hard. Instead, what can I do to make it happen. So ask yourself next time, when you are faced with a situation and you can do an inventory of your life in different areas of your life, where do you need to step up taking responsibility? Because when you do this, now you're in power. Now you have some level of control. Number two, be proactive and not reactive. When you look at a situation, maybe something happens to you, instead of reacting, anticipate what could happen. 
For example, right now, we're literally in a recession. When I paid Tony Robbins $50,000, I got to meet him and he was talking about winter is coming, right? And I remember this was like two, three, four years ago. People were paying like $50,000 to $100,000 to be in this room. And I'm there and I'm thinking to myself, man, I came here to be, you know, like charged up. This is Tony Robbins, compelling future and all that stuff. Why is he telling that there's a recession coming, that winter's coming? And I started preparing, why? Because I could anticipate, okay, you know what? He's got many more decades of life expertise, business expertise, and he's super well connected. Let me just listen to him instead of me trying to be a smart ass, which most people try to be a smart ass with no facts, no real foundation. And that's what gets them, right? And so we're in another recession. It's like, what are you doing? Are you gonna react to, oh my gosh, like gas prices and inflation and all this stuff is happening. You're feeling the pain. Or are you gonna ask yourself, hey, what are the skills I need to develop? What are the systems, the businesses, the multiple streams of income, my network? Who do I need to connect with so I can be proactive versus reactive? Does that make sense? Ask yourself, each morning when you wake up, are you checking your phone? Are you doing things that is reactive? Set up proactive behaviors that can help you get things done faster. Number three, that leads us to number three, which is speed. Okay, two of my favorite words, my wife will always say, you know, you always want everyone to do everything fast. I'm like, that's the only way. It's, it has to get done fast. Now, urgent, immediately, right now. Everyone that works with me, millionaires do things fast. Okay, broke people are always so slow. I don't like, it, sometimes it baffles me. I'm like, hey, how's it going? Oh yeah, I've been uh, trying to start my business. Yeah, how's that going? I'm talking to a millionaire, guess what they do? Hey, thanks for the idea yesterday. Boom, today I've implemented, I'm now making 50 grand extra. I'm now making a million dollars extra. Broke person, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm starting my business. How's that going? Yeah, I'm working on setting up a company. I have to get a company address registered. I'm like, huh? So what have you been doing for the last three months? Oh, you know, I'm looking at the, at the marketplace. I'm doing some research. I'm like, what are you talking about? Go to GoDaddy, get a domain, go to company's house, set up a, a company address. It's like two hour activity. Someone who's successful and rich, they'll understand it's all about speed. Listen, the more slower that you are, someone else is gonna be working faster, smarter, more efficiently than you. So what are you gonna do? Just wait? No, no time to wait. And that's the attitude that you need to have. Like for me, that's what helped. You need to cultivate an environment that encourages this behavior. You know, moving things fast, breaking things. That's how you learn. Not taking freaking three months to go and get yourself one paying client. Really? Like, how does that even work? Okay, number four, which transitions from number three, speed of implementation. And this is a shift and a habit that I developed. I got this from my friend, Ibn Pagan. Ibn popularized this concept of speed of implementation here. And he basically said that people that make more than 250K per year, they have this habit of, as soon as they learn an idea, they will go and implement as fast as possible. So next time you learn something, ask yourself, how long does it take for me to learn to implement, okay? When do I learn something and how fast can I go and apply? It? I promise you, if you can develop this habit of hey, whatever I learn, I'm just gonna put it into action there and then, there and then. It will be transformational. Number five, in this note, it says something about happiness is inner peace and stuff. Listen, being in charge of actions versus emotions. So many people tend to be very emotion driven. Emotion driven in everything that doesn't actually serve them. So it's like, you know, you ask, hey, how's your day going? Oh yeah, this, that, that happened. And they go into this emotional, long drama story, and then they, they, they're playing the victim, and this happened to that. It's like, shut up, what are you talking about? I ask you, how's your day going? You can easily just find the top one to two good things and just share that. From what I've seen, okay, is don't be an emotional wreck. It doesn't help the people around you. And if your friends and family have ever told you that you have issues with emotional management or your emotions or you're so overly sensitive and stuff, then now's the time to go and read one or two or three books on emotional intelligence, on how to manage your emotions. You know, when I first got started online marketing, uh, this was, what, 12 years ago? You can still see one of my first ever YouTube videos. 12 years ago, I published this. I remember people would write to me calling me a terrorist, okay? They'd call me Shakur Hussein, you know, are you related to Saddam Hussein? And they would make all sorts of insults and threats and whatever. Now, even at that time, okay, I remember very clearly thinking, who are these losers? Who are these people, these naysayers, these dream crushers? And I remember very clearly, it didn't affect me one tiny bit, why? 
I had goals that I was pursuing. I was so busy trying to get the money. I was so busy trying to build my business. I didn't have time for any of these things. If you have these issues where overly emotional, up and down, emotional intelligence, it's like one of the absolute keys that I found in shifting from, you know, broke to being a millionaire. Okay, the next one, which is like, like, airy fairy but whatever i'm gonna give it to you because this is what i found right your success is gonna come down to the pain threshold that you can endure most people have a very low pain threshold okay okay i don't know for most people but for me what happened was i started off with a big why i wanted to provide more for myself my family you know my uh, future family my loved ones because i grew up somewhat poor i didn't like growing up poor i saw Kids buy expensive trainers when they were in school. I saw uh, my dad driving a beat up car whilst his friends drove really nice cars. And I just like experienced, okay, what is poor? What is rich? And I was like, I don't like being poor. I'm like, man, I'm going to focus on uh, being rich. I'm going to do whatever it takes to learn how to make 100K and then a million and then I'll be rich. What will drive you is having a big why. And this mantra that I used to tell myself was, you know, the, the bigger the why, the easier the how. So when it came down for me to learn different skills, copywriting, webinars, speaking on stage, speaking to sell, meeting people in person at mass, you know, doing live events, doing seminars, it didn't matter to me that if it didn't work, why? Because my pain threshold was high. Right? If you don't have a pain threshold that's high enough, then you're very easily going to give up. You're very quickly going to be attracted to the next shiny object because you're always looking for the easier, easier, faster way. Right? And, and I get it. Like Even for me as a marketer, sure, I sell easier, faster solutions. But if you do not commit to one thing and you do not have a huge why, then guess what? With every setback, you're just going to quit. The people that I know, the, my students that have made the most amount of money, they have a huge why. And it doesn't have to be like, I want to change the world. It could be like, you want the best for your family and you won't settle for anything less. That why will carry you forward through all the different challenges. You know, when you put your focus on how can you being successful help the people around you, you're going to find different motivations. You're going to find different ways of getting the job done. Okay, my last and final shift, embracing failure as part of your learning curves. Okay, I don't even call the failures that I go through as failures. They're just learning curves. I recently lost $700,000-ish uh, cash on, on Terra Luna. It was this stupid ass crypto coin that I had invested in. By the way, before that, I lost millions of dollars in lots of different scams and investments. But if I sulked, if I cried for too long, okay, about those failures, about those learning mistakes, those expensive lessons, then I wouldn't be here today. Does that make sense? Right? And so what I found is that you are going to experience many levels of setbacks and lessons. You know, sometimes you're going to call them failures and flops and it's not the end of the world. Just have to keep moving. And again, this is like another millionaire mantra that I have is just keep moving, keep moving forward. Okay, like whatever happened, good or bad, okay, keep moving forward. What I've seen from myself and my top successful students is this was a key shift, okay? Embracing failure, embracing failure as learning curves, okay? And then the more learning curves that you can go through, uh, the faster that you'll be able to hit your goals. And so hopefully these lessons have been valuable to you. If you like more lessons like this, make sure you hit the like, subscribe button, and leave me a comment as to which lesson you're going to go and implement on. Remember, speed of implementation wins. I'll see you in the next video. Shakiru saying out.